watching KX News, putting North Dakota first. Despite not getting the press that it so rightfully deserved, the Korean War featured many firsts for the U.S. military, including the use of jet planes. But as Robert Sir tells us, one member of the Air Force had a much more important job than taking to the skies. Tonight we salute retired Master Sergeant Walter Reeling in our special series, Veterans Voices. Sometimes referred to as the Forgotten War, the Korean War was sandwiched between World War II and the Vietnam War. But for the hundreds of thousands of Americans who fought overseas for three years, it was a battle most will never forget. And that includes Bismarck's own Walter Reeling, who was a member of the U.S. Air Force. Walter's story begins at 17 on his father's farm in late 1950. When his father allowed him to enlist, he tells me many people, including one of his country school teachers, tried to talk him out of it. She met with my, me and my, my father, you know, and, and, uh, and she tried to, and she said, Walter has got, um, he's, I hate to say it in this way, but she, he's very intelligent, and I would hate to see him do something that, uh, he, where he couldn't use his, school, his uh, skill, you know. With Walter being a member of the Air Force, you probably think he was tasked with dropping bombs over such places like Yultong or the Imjin River. Instead, he was asked to put that high intelligence to use. Walter was an intelligence electronic warfare crypto maintenance specialist, meaning he was the middleman between those on the ground and Washington. I had a top secret uh, clearance, and uh, so I was able to go and handle classified stuff, you know. Matter of fact, everything we did was classified, re really. Walter would spend over a year near the South Korean capital of Seoul and tells me even though he wasn't in the air, he needed to be ready to fight at a moment's notice. We had to learn how to handle hand grenades and uh, uh, heavier artillery a little bit than normal. See, I had no clue on, on that was one of the things we didn't get trained in. Uh, as part of our original training, we didn't learn how to throw hand grenades or, uh, and, or um, how to set up a perimeter d defense, you know. And those are all things that we learn on the job. He adds many people think of Korea as a warm location, but in fact it can be just as cold and brutal as North Dakota, with soldiers on both sides suffering from hypothermia and freezing to death. The winters got so cold that um, we set our, our cots in circles and we had uh, had a pot belly stove, you know, and, and we had to keep, just in order to keep warm. Walter's time in Korea would last 13 months before his duties were done. His responsibilities in the Air Force would send him across the globe, including such places like Italy, Germany, and Turkey. He retired from the Air Force in 1971 after serving 20 years and two days, turning down a promotion and the opportunity to return to Korea. He's also written a 356-page memoir detailing his entire life, from the earliest days of his childhood to the marriage of his wife and all the fun that retirement brings. Reporting for KX News, I'm Robert Sir. The State Department of Veterans Affairs says nearly 200 North Dakotans would lose their life fighting for our country in the Korean War, including 11 from the Air Force. Well, stay with us. Still to come on KX News, the 